two years ago, on the day that I bought him to try him out, he reared up and flipped over backwards with me. Uh, I initially told the owner that we were purchasing from, no thanks, he's beautiful, but no thank you. So uh, so when he flipped over on you, you do you bail off? And no, so you didn't get hurt, back. or did you get hurt? I was on my back. Hey everybody, so uh, I got an interesting video for you today. I was going to say fun, but I don't know how fun it's going to be. <laughs> we'll see. Um, we got a horse um, that they called my friend Jake at Pear Tree Ranch. I just pulled in here. Um, they wanted him to work with this horse that apparently flipped over on the owner and flipped over on the trainer four times. And I kind of volunteered and said, actually, I'd like to do an evaluation and, and use the video on my YouTube channel. So um, so here we are. And um you know, my, my wife was asking me, she's like, Hi, are you sure you want to work with this horse? Isn't that kind of dangerous? I'm like, well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's about as dangerous as it gets having a horse flip over on you. Um, but my idea is to understand where that horse is coming from on the ground. Why is that horse so troubled that it feels like it needs to flip over to save itself and uh, what's, what's going on there? So um, I have no idea what we're getting into here. Uh, we're going to find out. So I'm excited and um, just waiting here for the, for the owners to pull up with the horse. So so I'm here with Vicki, and uh, she's brought her horse, Cisco. He's nine years old. Uh, we think he's a quarter horse. He's a grade, grade kind of buckskin horse. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just telling me a little bit about him. Like, if you could just kind of go through that with us again and uh, just tell me you've, you've had him about two years and what, what kind of challenges you're having with him and what you, what you want to do with him. Okay. Um, we bought Cisco about two years ago. On the day that I bought him to try him out, he reared up and flipped over backwards with me. Uh, I initially told the owner that we were purchasing from, no thanks, he's beautiful, but no thank you. Uh, so so when he flipped over on you, you do you bail off? And no, so you didn't get hurt or did you get hurt? I was on my back. I, I had some, probably some whiplash going on. Wow. Yeah. So, and he got up and left. I mean, he didn't even stick around to see if I was okay. The horse just like, see you later, dude. Um, he, was he supposed to be a safe trail horse at that point? Or he, what was the, the guy understanding? He was training him to do barrel racing and he liked he was training him also to hunt off of and i he had shown me videos of him shooting off the horse so i figured he's pretty safe but he did tell me he popped up a little bit a little bit of a rare but he never told me he flipped over and i don't think he knew he flipped over until that day because he was very shocked and yeah. upset but um so so then since then you've been you decided to buy him we bought him anyway <laughs> we liked some things about the horse and we thought maybe it was just a freak thing maybe he had some um dental issues going on maybe chiropractor so when we got him home we had all that checked out and everything was fine we took him on some trail rides the first time out and he reared up probably four or five times on that ride and that was riding without a bit um then i've taken him on trail i've worked with him at home i've taken him on some trail rides and some rides, no events, and then some days we would rear up, mm. depending on if a horse was walking away from him and he wanted to go and you're trying to hold him back. So it's, is it mostly connected when you have a hold of both reins and that's when he goes up or will he do that on a loose rein or anything? Um, I think he'll do it on a loose rein too. I really don't remember that, but it may be both reins. Mm. I always tried to shut down the rear by, by bending his, his neck around when I, cause I kind of picked up on his cues that he was getting ready to rear. Yeah. So I would try to shut it down before it happened. Yep. And then it hasn't really got, gone away. And so you ended up sending him for some training, but yeah. uh, were, were there other reasons you sent him for training or was that the issue you were sending him for? The last time I sent him, or I'm sorry, the last time I um, had an issue with him was in November. He, I was riding with a group of friends in an arena. There was four horses and we were trotting and he acted like he wanted to rear, so I thought, and when I tried to bring his head around, he bucked me straight up in the air. And from then I had to be seen at the chiropractor and everything else because I had a lot of issues going on in my shoulder. Wow. And then, and then so then this past month he was at a, tr uh, a trainer? Yes, we sent him um, in January to a trainer and he kept him for four weeks and rid rode him. He said he tried different bits and didn't seem to matter what bit or bozel he had him in. He's he reared up with him, and he he actually told me he flipped over with him four times. Holy smokes! And so did he kind of say I'm done with him? Or what did what was he his basically said advice he was a or recommendation? Don't get on him. Um, 
and I'm like, well, what do I do with him? Because I don't want to sell him and somebody get hurt, you know, because I want to tell him what he does. Yeah. But I don't want him to go to slaughter either because, I, you know, I'm kind of attached to the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, okay, we, so we got our hands full here. Um, so what, what I'm going to try to do is understand what – how he's feeling and what's troubling him enough to go to that extreme of flipping over. That's, a, I mean, that's a pretty serious move. Um, you know, they can, a horse can protest in a lot of different ways. And by the time it escalates to that, that would indicate to me that in that moment, he doesn't feel safe. If, if the horse doesn't feel safe, comfort doesn't matter. And that's why a horse will be willing to hurt themselves crashing through a fence or pulling back or flipping over or something like that if they are at that point of not feeling safe. And so what I'd like to do is work with him on the ground a bit, do an evaluation, see if we can find and get to know him a little bit more and read him a little more and see if there's a way we can put a little more psychology to this and understand what's triggering it and help him feel more comfortable where he doesn't feel like he needs to do that. Because it does sound like you were using the right technique of bending him versus pulling him back. You know, it's not like you told me, well, I had a, you know, I was just trying to shut him down and pull him over backwards. You know, like you weren't trying to cause that you were, uh, doing it so so we need to figure out what's troubling him and uh, build from there so so we're gonna get him out of the trailer here and um, next thing you know we'll see us in the round pen and we'll get to work I'm gonna take a quick second to interrupt this video and just mention to you that if you're wanting to get serious about your horsemanship and you'd like me to be your horsemanship guide I have a patreon page where you can an I can answer your questions about your horse you can send me videos and do video coaching I have a library that has um, my program and kind of goes through the fundamentals and also a bunch of uh, various videos on different troubleshooting that things that come up with horsemanship. So we also do monthly giveaways and for the month of February we're going to be giving away a snaffle bit. This is one of my favorite rigs, Mylar Comfort Snaffle um, leather head stall and reins and uh, this is a, one of my go-to's. I use it all the time for trail riding, cutting training, um, foundation training where I'm teaching horses to be soft and supple laterally. This is a great all-around tool to have in your in your tack room. We're going to be giving it away in February and uh, so if you're on a member of the Patreon page, you're automatically going to be signed up. There's a link in the description below. Make sure you check it out. We'll see you guys on there. Let's get back to the video. Like standing still. If a horse can stand still on the ground, that they would be helpful for them also standing still in the saddle. It's in the same box. If a horse wants to run around on the ground, they're probably going to want to run around when you ride them. You know, if they're, it's like they're, they go hand in hand, right? So like right now, when I see how high his head is up, thing here and he's, he's standing still and he's not whinnying but his head is really high so the, right away that indicates to me he you know in the rear obviously rearing flipping over those are all up movements so then that means for me we need to focus on getting him to think about down so that's just an observation right off but I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a second I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with a few other things and just kind of my goal right now is to try to understand him a little better and see figure out what makes him tick um, and uh, just just t test a few different things um, I have a few other uh, other videos on my channel of, of doing this, um, and they're similar. They're all very similar of the evaluations because I, I I'm not tr right in this moment. I'm not necessarily going to try to fix anything. Right. I'm just seeing what what his responses are to different stimulus and different you know steady pressure, rhythmic pressure, speed, you know that kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we are videoing, so so you'll he'll be able to watch that as well. Either either way, yeah. So I want to see what his response is to the flag. So that's a little bit scary to him. And so right now, so just right off the bat, the first thing is, it, it's not totally pass or fail, but it, it is a little bit. I'm my energy is quiet, and I move the flag, and then that bothered him. So that tells me that he didn't read my intention. He read the energy of the flag. And the goal is for a horse is to learn to, you know, like, it's like there's a saying, if you get a horse for the f a first horse, they'll say, if you're calm, the horse will be calm. And we'd love for that to be true. But that's something that you have to teach a horse to do. You have to teach them to follow your intention. If you bring your life up and you want to go somewhere, all the way up to running fast in a barrel pattern, you want them to bring their life up and go. If you stop and bring your life down you want that horse to come back with you so that's a skill um, and so if I just move this flag a bit and he kind of wants to take off running let's see now that was better you know so nothing major but just little 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 observation right off the bat that he maybe isn't because a horse can learn to be obedient without being connected and what I'm looking for is 
to, for, to build a connection with him. And that to me means him and I are on the same page at the same time. He, he's understanding. He's, he's not just, it's like you could have lunch with somebody and they're, they're on their phone the whole time and you're having a conversation and they didn't hear a word you said, you know, um, it's like, or you could, they could make eye contact and you could, you could have them be like, yeah, wow. You know, I, I've experienced that before too. And all, and you like have this heart to heart and you have like a really good conversation and you feel, you feel satisfied. You feel like, yeah, that was, that was good. You know, you didn't change the world or anything, but you just, you feel like you had a good conversation because there was a connection between you and that other person that you were having a conversation with. That's what I'm trying to do with the horse is not just go, will you behave and do the things I want you to do? It's like, will you fully understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to try to understand what he's saying. So that's what we're going to try to get, get to. Did he ever injure himself when he flipped over? No. Did he injure something? Well, he took me to the chiropractor. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's pretty good. Now, so like even there, like that took to me a fair bit of pressure to ask him to, to move. Especially since he, he wanted to move there. Like, so like right away at, at first I moved the flag and my intention wasn't to go anywhere and he, he moved. <laughs> and then that time my intention was to go somewhere and he didn't move. Does that make sense? So, so it's like, okay, we got to get on the same page here so that we're, we're understanding each other. Um, and so, so then I, so once he finally went, I took all the pressure off. So he got relief for, for moving and now I'll present it to him again. So I'll give him a direction with the halter and I'll ask and see there we had a little, there was a connection. He understood my idea to move off to the right that time. I also like there that his head, his head and neck are softening, but I kind of want to see if he could be on a circle in movement. And what's interesting is he's cantering now, but my intention has not changed. My intention is he could be walking on the circle right now, but instead he's cantering. And so that's where there's the disconnect. And so then him stopping, he stopped abruptly, but it was a stop as a reaction. I want him to walk calmly and read my energy and not read the flag. Now, obviously somebody could have taught him that, you know, when you move the flag, it means run around, but when I first sent him off, you could see that he, he didn't think run around at first. And so I'm just trying to get him to not worry about the flag or other th conditions and focus on me a little bit more, which is also when you described him rearing in different situations, it was like the only variable was he wasn't, him and the rider weren't on the same page at that moment. He was thinking about being with the other horses or something else. The rider had the idea to stand still there. So, you know, and so that's, so it's essentially the same thing. And obviously the, the bigger, the, the more of the reason that he has for his idea, the, the more willing he's going to be to, to rear or, or flip over if he doesn't, um, you know, get to express what he's thinking at that time. The other thing that's important with a horse that wants to rear and flip over, that's like the exact opposite of going forward. And so I don't, what you don't want to do with a horse like this is focus on getting him to do a bunch of things standing still. I want to do a bunch of things where I add a little stimulus and the answer is move away, but move off in a calm, when I say move away, I should say forward, move forward, but in a relaxed, calm way, you know, but I'm going to come at it from different angles, different perspectives. So I feel like that's a little bit more thoughtful based on his head is still up. So he's not as relaxed as I'd like him to be, but he's moving there instead of rushing. Would like it to be a little bit more forward. See, again, the answer is in forward, is in forward movement. 
And because he got a little bit unsure about that, that is gonna be the overall priority is if we put pressure on and we ask you to move it forward is gonna be a good place. See there, he's getting relief moving forward, which I mean, he licked and chewed there for just a second. Well, something else that's kind of interesting about him, if you read his, his body language, he doesn't blink a ton, or at least he wasn't on that circle. He licked and chewed just kind of real quietly. So he's fairly introverted about these things, which means there's more going on inside than what you see on the outside. Some horses can be more extroverted or more introverted. An extrovert horse is one that they're, they're witty in and sweaty and running around and you can just visibly see they're very bothered. A horse that's more introverted, there could be just as much going on inside that horse, but they're, they're more stuck with it. They're more like uh, frozen, so to speak. Well, I'm not saying, I'm just saying like the way he's doing it is, is some tendencies. I, I'm not trying to identify him yet as a specific uh, type. Because any horse can move their feet, you know, and get, and get worried. Um, you, you have to read all these things within context of different situations. So I like that. Flag was going. He got a little softer there. Go ahead and bring him in. Good. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up, and we just sing along, and I can't help but feeling just loving this moment. Can we stay here? I could stop the time, don't you know that I would? Cause I'm just loving this moment. Can we stay here? So I'm just gonna ask him to, um, you know, see how well he handles different things being around him. And then I'm gonna ask him to follow a feel with steady pressure. And we'll see how, how he responds to that. So that was really nice. Not too bothered about that. Very good. So steady pressure can be innately one of the most scary things to a horse to accept. Like if you picture like a, either a baby foal that's never been handled or a wild Mustang um, that's never had a rope on them or something. And when you put that rope on them for the first time, rearing and flipping over is a very likely outcome if you do it too quickly. Um, and so asking him to follow a feel with steady pressure is gonna be a really key thing. That's also, steady pressure is also how we, you know, we, we need them to give to steady pressure with a million different things to live safely with humans, right? Fencing, <laughs> hauling them in the trailer, the vet, you know, handling them, the farrier picking up their feet, leading them, uh, reins, you know, we, put a feel on to ask him to back up or stop or something. That's all steady pressure. So I'm just gonna put this around his neck. And the reason I'm putting it around his neck instead of just attaching a longer rope to the halter is um, he, it's gonna be harder for me to make him do something like this. It's gonna be, there's gonna be plenty of room for him to do what he wants to do. And it's all about getting him to choose to do what I'm asking versus me making him do what I'm asking. So he doesn't need more control. He needs more, more of a choice of what he's, what he's thinking about doing. Now, so I first just making sure he could wear that rope and be okay with it. He looks pretty okay with it to me, so I'm gonna put a feel on it now. And I'm just gonna see what it takes to get him to give. So he gave his hip pretty good there. I don't want to pop over his butt. So I'm holding. And there he made a choice. 
So again, I really couldn't have made him turn like that. It was more just put him in a little situation and see if he can kind of think his way through it. He seems like he finds this interesting. See the, see the licking shoe? But it's so subtle. A lot of horses, when they have a little moment of release, they, their tongue will really come out of their mouth. He's very subtle about it. So it wouldn't, I don't think it would take a whole lot of pressure to bother this horse. You know what I mean? Like you picture if a, horse, if a rider was riding a horse and they flip over on him, you would kind of want to think that that rider must have just pulled on those reins really hard and this horse wanted to run and they were just holding on to him and then the horse couldn't handle it anymore and came over. You wouldn't think the horse is standing there and the rider had a loose rein and the horse just flips over, you know, but if they're that bothered and there's that much kind of miscommunication between the two, it can, you know, it could, it could escalate to that. Feel free to care to back up if you need to when he comes by or if it looks okay. Either way. So I'll put a little feel. Another little subtle lick and chew. <laughs> he's, he's real quiet about it, which is interesting. Now that didn't seem too, too terribly hard for him. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this rope between his front legs and I'm just gonna ask him to lower his head with it. But it's gonna feel a little different to him than doing it with the halter because that's, that's probably a little more normal, a little more common. It's probably not used to being asked to lower his head from a distance. And so by me, now I didn't ask him to crowd my space there. That's why I'm going to go ahead and just say, no, I didn't, didn't ask for that. Everything is going to be deliberate. So what's, what's interesting about horses is they, they can very easily become a pat, do pat, a pattern. And you could have, get, you could get a horse to do a pattern without the horse really thinking much about it. And um, so that's the whole name of the game with this horse is to get him thinking, get him thinking about what's the question, what's the answer, not just doing his own thing and reacting the way he thinks is appropriate. But horses are pretty easily managed and made to do what we want. You know, they're, they're pretty malleable for the most part, especially if you compare them to donkeys <laughs> or even mules are less so like that. They'll, they'll fight and argue quicker um, and you'd have a harder time forcing one to do something, you know. Not, not that it would be impossible, but it would just be harder. I would say probably a zebra would be even, even more difficult than that. Just a stronger, that's that flight versus fight instinct. Now there, his no, he didn't lower his head, but his nose gave. He just tipped his nose. And by me releasing on that, even though his head didn't get lower to the ground, it's like he, he, he noticed that I noticed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna build rapport with him just by me noticing those subtle little changes and not waiting for really big results before I release something. Because it's not about where I keep his head. It's like, you didn't show up here and go, hey, I just need this head to be lower. If you could just figure that out, that would be a, it. Was, it's about how do we get this horse to be safer, you know, to ride and be around. And that doesn't come from the position of his head being down. It comes from mentally him choosing to act like a partner and not, not be afraid of what we're presenting him with. I mean, some people really like a horse with a high head. <laughs> some horses naturally have a very high head. Some horses have a head that's lower than their withers. Just, you know, and the, so that's not, so even though I'm lowering the head, it's not about that. It's about that mental, that mental give. But see here, he, he's giving his leg instead of giving at the pole. I'm just going to put a little bit stronger feel because I don't want him to learn to wear it either. I want to make it uncomfortable enough that he thinks about making a decision. So it's interesting there, his nose gave again, but the head also came down just a little bit. There's our another subtle lick and chew. <laughs> I 
And did he do pretty good about wearing a saddle and not bucking with a saddle? Oh, did you see that? As soon as I put a little feel that time, he, there we go. So rewarding those little tries leads to more, more effort. There we go. Really good. So that's the lowest his head's been uh, since we've been in here, which I think is pretty big. And then the fact that he's leaving it there now and being comfortable. Yeah, he, he, I, I'm, the more I'm working with him, the more I'm thinking he's actually very introverted. Yeah. And I, I get the impression that this conversation about the head down um, will be meaningful to him. So I'm going to stay here for a minute and work on this from a couple other perspectives. So this was so when I, this, what I mean by perspectives is in that case, I was in front of him. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to get to the side of him and we'll add, we'll add motion to it. So doing something at a standstill is fine and dandy, but if you could do it at canter, that would be like eight, 80% better, <laughs> you know, like if you could do it at walk, that's like, well, 20% better. So, so you got to make it this, the, the situation has got to be a little more challenging. In other words, like if you can stop a horse from a walk, that's cool. Can you stop him from a trot? Can you stop him from a canter? Can you stop him from a gallop? Now you really have something. You know, so there's there's depths and levels to to all these things. So right now it's it's surface levels what I'm getting at this stuff we're we're kind of playing with here. But we have to build build that as an answer. I think there's actually a little bit of irony to this because you're here and we're doing the evaluation with me, but we're at Pear Tree Ranch in my buddy Jake's place. And he's also very big on getting horses to yield the head and neck, but he likes to do it more from rhythmic pressure, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm doing it with steady pressure, but I think doing this with from different ways, either way he's lowering his head, but um, I think the more ways you find to do any one thing, the better that one thing can get. So we're gonna start here and then are you in a hurry at all? Me? Yeah. yeah. You got, we got time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because this type of horse, I feel like going slow and taking my time here with this is more valuable than trying to do 50 million things. And There we go. That was a good try. There. So that was actually a pretty good release. He shook his head there a little bit. Sometimes when they do that, it means they're coming off some stress hormones like adrenaline or cortisol. It's also interesting. He's not sweaty at all. And I'm sweaty, even though I haven't done a whole lot. It's a pretty warm day here um, in beautiful Florida. Make everybody that's not in Florida right now a little bit jealous. <laughs> I'm about to head back home to Wisconsin and it's going to be a snowstorm. There we go. Okay. So I'm happy with that. I, that was actually went better than I was expecting. And basically if I find something that goes better than I was expecting, I'm not going to gain a lot more by doing it more. <laughs> it's when I find something that d doesn't go well, that's when I'm fixing something. If it goes well, if it's easy for him, then I'm not really getting, I'm not really getting there.
Now, see, here's the interesting thing too. I, I just moved this out from underneath his leg and me just doing that was enough for him to decide he needed to leave, right? That's, that's what happened, right? I went to move around and he was like, uh, I'm gone. You know, imagine if you were having dinner with somebody and you ask them their name and they go, okay, okay you know, my name's Ryan. And you say, well, where are you from? And I'm like, <laughs> like too much, too much pressure. I can't tell you where I live. You know, like you would, you'd be like, whoa, what? you know, I didn't, I didn't ask you what your religion is or what your political stance is or, you know, or any of that, you know, stuff that's more of like, you know, pushing the buttons of a little deeper conversation there. And so that's interesting. And the reason that's interesting or the reason it's significant might be a better word. If you're sitting on him, he can't, it's a little harder. If he's feeling pressure, it's a little harder for him to just be like, Oh, I need to, I need to exit the stage. Right. Cause everything's there. And so what happens then is we miss some of those more little cues and it can kind of, it can kind of build, build from that. Um, so there's just something to, something to observe there. Um, let's do this. I'm going to put his halter back on. I'm going to test this a couple more ways. So like even here, just asking him to halter, I'm not just going to put a halter on him. I'm going to ask him to participate with the haltering by lowering his head and bringing it towards me. But by doing it this way, it, it really makes everything mean something. Yeah, like yep. So the camera probably couldn't have heard that. So what Vicky said is it, it always feels like I'm haltering a, gira a giraffe, um, which you could see just he came in the round pen and just head is straight up. And um, the first principle of horsemanship that I follow is work with the horse where they're at. And well, that requires us to understand where, where that is. And, uh, and where they're at could be, you could have pulled him off the trailer and maybe his buddy was in the trailer and maybe he's whinnying over there the whole time while where he's at is thinking back to that buddy horse. Or you go, okay, um, where are they at is like, are they, do they want to, do they feel good standing still? Do they feel good moving? Where, where are they at? You know, with that. We're hit physically, where, what's their posture? Are they thinking about sleeping? Got a leg cocked, head hanging down, lip, you know, lip soft? Or is he a little bit alert? looking for danger and he's, his baseline has been concerned to alert for now, which would be fair when I'm working the flag or I'm challenging him with something. But when we're just standing here, see, I don't know if you notice, notice that he just took a deep breath. He, see there, he just decompressed. He just lowered and softened a little bit from where he was at. And this is where he should be. Like, it's like, Hey, there's, there's nothing happening. Beautiful sunny day. It's not that windy. There's other horses around. There's not a lot of reason for him to be concerned or alert at this stage. Now, if he was a two-year-old horse that never been off the property and this and that, well, he's nine and he's experienced and he's been hauled around. He's been to trail rides and maybe some barrel racings, who knows? So it's like just standing here in a round pen in a really quiet environment shouldn't be a big deal, right? All right, I was going to, I'm going to put this rope on another place on him. I'm going to put it on his hind leg. And the reason I'm going to put it on a hind leg is horses can be, defensive of certain areas of their body more than others and the, the hind leg um i'm not a great roper as you can <laughs> i need to uh i need to work on that myself yeah i'm, I'm yeah so i'm a header actually <laughs> i'm not a healer i'm gonna use that you're gonna see that in a video later on be like <laughs> that'll be my punchline. i'm a header I'm just going to get his tail out of here. There we go. So around their pole, if you, if you worked with a baby foal or a Mustang, they can be very defensive around their pole right here, which he, he is just in terms of his brace. You know, he's not scared of me petting him here or something, but just how braced that is and how, how tight the muscles are right here. There's, there's tension there. They can be very protective of their, feet, their legs and their belly um, area, the flank area. So that's why we're going to go to, go ahead and
So that's an interesting response because he's not pulling on it at all, but he, you know, he, he wasn't really finding that standstill right away. So all I'm doing is putting a feel on it there to where he gives standstill and get like stopped or just gave to it. So what's interesting is he gave to it, meaning he didn't kick. A lot of horses will kick at it right there. Um, and he, you know, he got bothered by it, but he never pulled on it, which is just interesting. So that also tells me there's not a lot for me to do there. Like he wasn't really bothered by that. That's not, a, there's not really a, a room or area for me to increase his understanding of giving to pressure there by, by a whole lot. I'm gonna do it one more time just cause we're there. And it'll be interesting to measure his, his response. So we saw the first time what it took to get him to stop. Here's the second time. Quite a bit less, right? And there's the lick and chew. So that, that also tells me he's in a good learning frame of mind. You know, it's easy for him to, um, you know, read new information. Um, but because that didn't bother him really at all, there's nothing there to improve the idea of him not rearing. So I think now would be a good time to actually go ahead and get the saddle out. If there was prob if there was a problem there, I might. Um, meaning if, if he would have reacted and kicked and ran around and it got bothered, I probably would have then done it on both sides. But today is testing different things, so I'm gonna kind of move forward with the, the test. That was a really good response to have, you know. Um, didn't bother him very much. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get a saddle out and uh, we'll come right back.